now we discuss the problem of decision theory when data is available that means how we define the different kind of decision rules based on data uh, first we discuss some terms used in the decision theory let x1 x2 xn be a random sample from a population having the cumulative distribution function capital fx and the probability density or mass function small fx let x denote the observed value of the random vector this that means small x basically denote the observed data a non randomized decision rule is defined as a delta x is a function from sample space chi into the action space scripted if x equal to x is the observed value then delta x is a action that will be taken so when x is observed delta x basically indicate a simply an action for no data problem a decision rule is simply an action two decision rules delta 1 and delta 2 are equivalent if probability of delta 1 equal to delta 2 is equal to 1 that means delta 1 and delta 2 are equal almost everywhere decision problem sometimes we call different name Uh, in terms of the decision rule for example when we are working in for the estimation problems our decision rule is called the estimator in testing problems we call as a test function in selection problems we call selection rule these all are the decision rules in decision theory the risk function of a decision rule delta is defined by the expected value of the loss function since decision rule is a function of the random variable so loss function is also depends on the random variable and the parameter space so if we take the expectation of l theta delta x this is called a risk function of this when we work on the no data problem then it means that there is a no data then risk function and loss functions are same for a decision rule delta risk function is a pure function of the parameter it means that for the different loss fun- uh, different decision rules we have different kind of loss functions for finding the good decision rules first of all we define the admissible decision rule so a decision rule delta 1 is called better than the another decision rule delta 2 if r theta delta 1 is less than equal to r theta delta 2 for every theta in parametric space with stick inequality hold for some theta it means that at least for few theta values of theta this inequality must be stick then we call theta 1 is better than theta 2 in case r theta 1 r theta delta 1 is exactly equal to r theta delta 2 we call as the two decision rules are equivalent a decision rule delta is admissible if there exist no better decision rule it means that whenever we compare the decision rules if there is no better decision rule then our decision rule then our decision rule is an admissible decision rule if there are such an better decision rule exists then we call the our decision rule delta is inadmissible
now we consider an example uh, for uh, um, admissible or inadmissible decision rules let x be a random sample from normal distribution with mean theta and variance one consider the problem of estimation of mean theta under the squared error loss function l theta delta which is equal to delta minus theta whole square consider a class of decision rule of the form delta cx equal to c times x where c lies in the real number that's mean we have a infinite number that's mean uncountable number of decision rule in this class each value of c correspond a different decision rule that's mean different estimator of the theta first of all we can see we calculate the risk function of delta c so the risk function r theta delta c is equal to expected value of l theta delta c which is same as expected value of delta x minus theta whole square delta x is equal to c times x which is same as uh, expected value of cx minus theta whole square if we are just uh, simplify this equation we get r theta delta c is equal to the c square plus 1 minus c whole square theta square now whenever we consider the c equal to 0 the risk function of the corresponding decision rule delta not is equal to theta square when we consider c equal to 1 it corresponds to another decision rule delta 1 the risk function of delta 1 is constant which is equal to 1 for every value of the parameter theta for c is less than 0 we get 1 minus c is greater than 1 this implies that 1 minus c whole square into theta square which is larger than theta square if we add c square in the left hand side then inequality will not be changed so we get uh, inequality like c square plus 1 minus c whole square theta square because this is a larger quantity than the theta square then this again a larger quantity uh, uh, than the theta square so this is a risk function of r delta c and this is a risk function of delta naught it means that we get an inequality of r theta delta c is strictly greater than r theta delta naught for every theta in r and when c is less than 0. It means that all the estimator or decision rule which correspond to the negative value of c they are dominated by the delta naught it means that our decision rule delta naught is better than delta c for negative choices of c similarly if we consider c is greater than 1 we get c square plus 1 minus c whole square theta square it's always greater than 1 this implies that r theta delta c is strictly greater than r theta delta 1 since r theta delta 1 is a constant which is equal to 1. This means that our decision rule delta 1 dominates the all the decision rule delta c for c is strictly greater than 1. It means that decision rule delta 1 is better than decision rule delta c for c is strictly greater than 1. Hence, we get the result like that the decision rules delta c when c lies in the minus infinity to 0 and union of 1 to infinity all are n admissible. Now, the only remain decision rules are uh, c lies between 0 and 1. But we can easily see that whenever we choose the c in 011 the decision rules are not comparable 
it means that the choices of the decision rule in the 0 and 1 are admissible if we consider three decision rules delta not delta 1 and delta half that means c equal to half we correspond a decision rule delta half and the risk function is given by this r theta delta naught is equal to theta square and r theta delta half is equal to 1 plus theta square by 4 and r theta delta 1 equal to 1. Now we have plot the risk function of this decision rule. We can easily see that here whenever theta is close to 0, here the decision rule delta not perform better than other two decision rule but whenever delta not is uh, in, the theta is increases then delta not become worse than delta half but better than delta one but after a certain value of theta the delta not become worse than both of the case. similarly delta 1 is worse than the other two decision rule in some values of theta but other values of theta it perform better than the other that means the risk functions these three are non-comparable similarly we can choose any other value of c in 0 1 and we can plot and easily seen that these decision rules are non-comparable that means we get a whole class of estimator lies in the interval 0 and 1 which is a uh, interval of c they correspond to a class of admissible decision rule that means class of good decision rule but which decision rule we choose this pro uh, this problem is still open now we define the randomized decision rule a randomized decision rule delta star is a probability distribution on the action space script a for each value of the data x in sample space the loss function of the randomized decision rule is given by L theta delta star equal to expected value of L theta A. Here this expectation is taken with respect to the delta star. Since delta star is itself a probability distribution on action space. The, now the risk function of delta star is defined as r theta delta star which is expected value of l theta delta star here this expectation is taken with respect to the distribution of x given theta it means that r theta delta star is a pure function of the unknown parameter theta Now we consider a decision problem with parameter space theta 1 theta 2 and action space script A equal to A1 comma A2 and the loss matrix is given by this. The loss is uh, at theta 1 comma A1 is minus 1 and theta 1 comma A2 is 1 and theta 2 comma A1 is 1 and theta 2 comma a2 is minus 1. Now we consider x be a random variable having the distribution as a Bernoulli with parameter theta and also we defined delta p star be a class of randomized decision rule such that delta p star x comma a1 is equal to p ki power x 1 minus p ki power 1 minus x and delta star p x comma a2 equal to p ki power 1 minus x 1 minus p ki power x and p is a number between 0 and 1. The loss function of the randomized decision rule delta 
P star is given by L theta 1 delta P star equal to expected with respect to delta star L theta 1 a. This is equal to L theta 1 a 1 into delta P star x comma a 1. That means it is a probability of a equal to a 1 under the decision rule delta star and probability plus L theta 1 a 2 into delta star P at point a 2. We know that from the loss matrix L theta 1 a1 is minus 1 and delta P star at a1 is P key power x 1 minus P key power 1 minus x. Similarly, we get L theta 1 a2 is 1 and the P star at a2 is given by P key power 1 minus 1 of x and 1 minus P key power x. Now, if we consider the value of the Bernoulli distribution x equal to 0 we get 2p minus 1 and when x equal to 1 the loss is 1 minus 2p similarly we can compute the loss value at theta 2 under the decision rule delta p star which is equal to 1 minus 2p if x equal to 0 and 2p minus 1 if x equal to 1. Now we compute the risk function. So risk function is just a expected value of the loss function. So if we consider the expectation of L theta delta p star which is same as when theta equal to theta 1 in this situation we are computing the value of this into probability of x equal to 0 and 1 minus p into probability of x equal to 1. After simplification we get the value as a 2p minus 1 1 minus 2 theta and when theta equal to theta 2 we consider this loss function and take the expectation of this loss function then the value of the loss function into probability of x equal to 0 and value of loss function 2p minus 1 into probability of x equal to 1 after simplification we get this value so this is a loss function of the randomized decision rule delta star if we take p equal to 1 by 3 our risk function is given by this now we can see that it is a pure function of theta similarly if we choose p equal to 2 by 3 our risk function of the decision rule delta 2 by 3 star as given by this if we choose p equal to half our risk function is equals to 0 for all choices of theta 1 and theta 2 now we defined a minimax decision rule a decision rule delta m is minimax if it minimizes the supremum risk among all decision rule in the given class that is supremum over theta in parameter space r theta delta m equal to infimum over the class of decision rule d supremum over theta in parameter space r theta delta the quantity given in the right hand side this is called the minimax value of the problem now we continue example 5 recall that x follows normal with mean theta and variance 1 the loss function is a squared error which is given by l theta delta equal to delta minus theta whole square and our class of decision rule is given by delta c equal to c times x the risk function we have already computed is r theta delta c which is equal to c square plus 1 minus c whole square theta square now we will compute the supremum of this loss function so for the choice of the c equal to 1 when we put c equal to 1 
the uh, this function is just equal to 1 that's mean the risk function of delta 1 is a constant which is equal to 1 that's mean supremum over the risk function of delta 1 is equal to 1 for the other choices of c this risk is an increasing function of theta and supremum become infinity that means the infimum value of the supremum risk over the class of all decision rule is just one so one indicate the min max value of this problem and the min max decision rule is delta one 